well, this latest development has gotten a lot of people worried. Well, let's bring you more on this and what is being done. Dr. Mokhtar Mohammed is the head technical secretariat of the Presidential Steering Committee. He joins us via Zoom from Abuja. Well, Doctor, it's great to have you. I mean, seeing this particular announcement from the PSC rightly got a lot of people concerned, wondering, have I come in contact with those people? But let's, let's backtrack a bit. Just how did this happen? So, uh, good evening, viewers. Um, yes, we put out the notice uh, to declare these people as persons of interest because these are people who have visited uh, in the last 14 days uh, the restricted countries of either India, Brazil, or Turkey. And by our regulation, uh, these passengers are supposed to, uh, if they have been to these countries in the last 14 days, they should be quarantined here in Nigeria and be tested before we allow them uh, to go out into the public. So what has happened, there were various um, uh, reasons. Um, some of the passengers actually slipped through uh, from the airport. Uh, they did not get to the quarantine facility. Some arrived at the quarantine facility, but um, maybe after spending a day or two, um, they also left. And some for some unexplained reasons, um, we were not able to, to see them registered, but we know they arrived at the country. And um, uh, we are also investigating how, you know, they were able to slip through uh, the processes and through the airport. And that is why these persons, because of the current um, risk that they pose to the public, that we want them to report to the public health department in the states that they are, so that they can be properly evaluated, quarantined if necessary, and also tested before we allow them to continue uh, with their activities. Well, so far after this uh, particular notice was given, have you had people coming out to say, well, I'm one of those people and I'm voluntarily, you know, uh, putting myself back so I can be isolated or quarantined for the normal period? Have you recorded any success so far? Yeah, this morning we've received several calls. Uh, many people have been calling uh, the Federal Ministry of Health uh, to inform them that um, this is their location, uh, asking for advice on what they need to do. Uh, some of them have uh, actually come forward in Abuja uh, to be taken back to, to our quarantine facility. Now, um, uh, certainly, you know, this, this is meant to uh, have a proper evaluation of these passengers um, and also do a risk assessment. Anyone that is found to be possible, positive um, will have to be uh, tracked to find how many people he has come into contact with, his close family members uh, will need to be tested to ensure their own safety as well. Well, Doctor, I'm, I'm looking at that uh, travel advisory which was issued on May the 1st this year and in part 2C, uh, specifically says that any person who has visited those countries which you mentioned are meant to undergo seven-day mandatory quarantine in a government-approved facility at the point of entry city. Uh, is it that this was not strictly monitored? Because you expect that if it's government-approved, then there will be proper monitoring, proper security in place. So uh, what exactly went wrong? Is this government approved facility, is it that they didn't have enough security? And I know we'll still talk about the role of state, but from your preliminary findings, what exactly happened? So like I said at the beginning, there are various uh, uh, factors. Um, you know, Nigerians, there are people who, who actually, when they came into the country, they complied, and that is most of the people majority of the people have complied and they have been taken to the quarantine uh, centers. They are currently under isolation, but there are a few who actually, when they arrived, you know, they uh, kind of, uh, you know, try to, to find their own way and uh, breach the protocol. Um, yes, it is true that some of the security might not have been enough and tight, particularly at the airport. Uh, you know, with flights that are arriving maybe late in the night, um, we understand some of them will insist that they will not stay and the they will perhaps overpower some of the security, the few security personnel that are, are available there. But most of them actually were taken to the quarantine facility 
pretended that you know they have complied and only for them uh, to disappear you know uh, after after a few days uh, without completing the mandatory seven day seven day period so we are taking these serious measures and um, certainly there will be uh, a deterrent uh, to make sure that uh, this does not happen because we take the priority uh, the health of Nigerians as priority. So uh, at whose table does the box stop really? Because like you said, this shouldn't happen again. That particular advisory says that state governments are primarily responsible for monitoring of you know, those travelers to ensure that they adhere to the mandatory seven-day quarantine and of course repeat their COVID-19 PCR. So is this largely a failing of some state mechanism or what? Well, um, there are two different things here. Um, people who arrive from the restricted countries will be quarantined at the state of entry. That is, we're talking of where we have airports. That is Lagos, Abuja, Kano, Kotakot, um, and Inugu, which has not yet opened to international flights. But for passengers that arrive from other destinations, what they're expected to do is to isolate at home in their final destination. So people that arrive in Abuja, if you haven't been to any of these restricted countries, you know, you will go back, you will go to your final destination and then self-isolate there. That is where the role of the state governments is in ensuring that people actually do that isolation and they also test on day seven. But in this case, yes, the states also where we have these airports have a role to play, uh, which is provision of the quarantine and supporting the security particularly at the quarantine uh, facilities. Most of the states, you know, we just started now. Uh, we just started uh, about a couple of weeks ago. And uh, most of the states are now coming on board. Lagos State has done uh, the most, you know, by providing us with the long list that um, we have seen now. And they're taking adequate uh, measures to ensure that they beef up security, both at the airport and also at the quarantine facilities. Um, and just to let you know, we are still working on additional lists that will be released uh, perhaps by tomorrow, uh, you know, of passengers, particularly in Abuja, who have absconded from uh, these quarantine facilities. I just wonder, um, on a final note, what, what are the possibilities? Because, I mean, the majority of these travelers, well, a good number of them, 38, uh, had been in India. And, I mean, you know, of course, that Nigeria is keeping a close watch on the Indian variant of COVID-19. So what are the possibilities here? Because, I mean, we don't know where those people have been. Maybe that will be gotten from the information they give eventually when they come in. But what, what is the worst case scenario you're looking at here? Well, so um, the worst case scenario is that somebody who is positive, um, who has uh, escaped being in quarantine, uh, would have gone to uh, his family, interacted with them, possibly gone out to interact with other people in the community. And there is that possibility that, um, you know, if he's positive, that he can transmit uh, that infection. So what we're trying to do now is to get them back and test them. Um, and of course, like I mentioned, there will be some deterrent measures. But first of all, our priority is to test them uh, to ensure the safety of the people that they have come into contact with and to initiate um, contact uh, tracing where necessary so that all people who have been in contact with them can also be uh, monitored and tested um, and uh, uh, provided with the appropriate uh, management, you know, in accordance with our guidelines. Uh, are some airlines culpable in all of this? I know that uh, there's a fine to be paid by airlines who maybe flout some of those guidelines in the recent one released. Is any of, uh, any of the airlines culpable in this? Certainly, we have uh, uh, found some of the airlines, um, and these are, people, these are airlines that deliberately brought in people who have not presented their COVID uh, negative results, or they have a positive result and they are, uh, you know, uh, transported into Nigeria. We have identified some of these airlines, we have found them, and we'll continue, you know, to, to monitor other airlines, you know, for such uh, uh, breach in protocol. Well, Dr. Mokhtar Mohammed, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I wish you the very best uh, in trying to keep this under control. Thank you very much. I really appreciate being on your platform too.